I want to I want to drill down on that sustainability thing. We've been talking a lot about it. Um, I you know been chatting with Matthew for a few years now. Uh, I think Matthew, you said at one point, if we can make sustainability profitable, profitable, that's where we win. It is. Yeah. yeah. So Matthew, tell us, talk us along that, and then I want to ask Dave because you know airline industry is David. David, you know just what. You know, yeah. how airlines can help out in this, right? You, you already talked a little bit about how you're being community driven, but let's start with Matthew uh, on what you're doing yeah. on the travel agency side. Well, I hear you, and actually, we, you know, in our particular role, since we own nothing, uh, we actually thought ourselves, um, we started looking on and focusing on the sustainability story about 10, 10 years ago. Our particular philosophy is start where you are, and I'd rather see 95% of the planet take one step forward than 5% of people trying to get it perfect to a, to a standard that keeps shifting. So shame and blame, in my, in my particular perspective, does not work. There's proven science that says that human beings will not change their, their actions except for a very short period of time based on fear. We gotta actually show that there's something better at the end of this process and let's quit the shame and blame and move there. So our perspective at Virtuoso was very simple. We have, a, and, you know, we're really happy to have Intrepid, for example, and the things, you know, that Lisa was talking about was value-based businesses. You know, that's a real thing now. There, there's, a, there's starting to be a real shift. And so our pr pr particular perspective was in what we do is how do we shine a light on those partners of ours that are doing some of the world's greatest work. And when we talk about sustainability, I just want to remind everybody that sustainability is not just the planet. It's the planet, it's the benefit of local economies, and it's the preservation of natural and cultural, um, preservation of natural and cultural heritage. So it's three things, right? So our job is to try to tell the story so that those people doing the best things are the most successful back to this idea of, of a virtuous cycle. Um, and that's, and, and in fact, I was in, uh, in London uh, uh, late last year, <clears throat> and Dr. Picard, who's you know, the gentleman that flew the first solar airplane around the world, was talking about that. He says, we gotta quit doing it, we gotta show a better perspective. For us, it's about telling that story, about making it easier. From, a, from the perspective of a consumer, uh, I was uh, again in Europe uh, recently, and the question was asked, well, what are your clients talking about? What are they saying about sustainability? It's a hot buzz topic. And every one of these advisors, a lot of them were young advisors, right? Well, nobody's really asking for it. Nobody's really specifically coming in and saying, give me a sustainable trip, right? And finally, I couldn't stand it, and I, 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 I had to speak up, and I said, this is a leadership thing. This is about the fact that our job is to not only help people have an amazing experience, but to actually make it easier for them to understand. And by the way, from a travel advisory and market perspective, there's a massive market of people that if we make it easy for them to have an amazing experience and also make it easy for them to identify those partners that are doing the best things, that will actually create an incredibly valuable market of values-based customers that will have a greater loyalty to our services and the services of our partners. Yeah. Uh, David, you're absolutely. Uh, David, air, sustainability and airlines often aren't in the same sentence. Um, but you've actually, you know, obviously we're getting more fuel efficient aircraft, we're getting, and you are talking about some sort of community focused ways you're thinking about flying. Uh, how, how is the future going to be in, involved with airlines and sustainability? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think, um, you know, we've got uh, World Economic Forum going on in, in Davos today and you know, yesterday, Greta uh, basically said no more fuel. There is there is that movement going out there. We've right got now. zero emissions. So. How many people are going to? So I've grounded. Airlines? We've grounded all the flights today. So you're all going to have to walk home. So I'm sorry. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a difficult issue. I mean, there's so much that can be done, right? Uh, to be able to, you know, I'm using paper bags in Connecticut nowadays. We don't have any more plastic bags. Uh, they make you pay for those now. Yeah, you know. We're getting used to paper straws in Seattle. I mean it, uh, and wood and wood forks and all that kind of stuff. So there is a lot that can be done. Um, obviously, if you want to fly, 
Um, there are actually, um, I had a presentation the other day from um, an, an airplane that's a trainer aircraft to train pilots that is uh, solar, uh, it's battery powered, which helps tremendously even on the maintenance cost because there's not an internal combustion engine, so you have lower maintenance costs. Uh, we're obviously a ways away from being able to fly um, you know, with, without uh, fossil fuels. Uh, it's, not, it's just not gonna be possible. So I think the thing we gotta do is try and get the plane, and there is an economic reason to have planes that fuel, burn less fuel, right? So, um, you know, we are, all of our fleet, our, our 730, our A320 fleet in Brazil is all 100% NEOs, new engine option. They burn 20% less fuel uh, than, than our other planes, so we're contributing to that. Uh, you know, there's a lot we can do also. And again, that's an economic reason because now it's less expensive for you, right? Right, and you know, there's, um, you know, <laughs> I, I've recently gone kind of, I call it flexitarian, but I'm mainly plant-based eating. And I, you know, I learned that there were you know, 20 billion animals uh, on the earth that were being processed uh, for food uh, every year. And so if everyone just went without meat for one, who got the roasted vegetables today? <laughs> okay, see, so congratulations. If even if it just went without one meal a day, you could eliminate three billion animals. So, hey, you know, you can come after us, but you gotta fly. And so we'll become fuel efficient. And then there's a lot of things we can do, you know, on the ground with electric vehicles and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, you know, it, it's when you suspend something in the air, it burns more fuel for, per, per customer than if you roll it down a road. That's just a fact. Absolutely. Or if you push it through the water. So yeah. uh, I want to move to Lisa. Uh, you have some comments on I do. sustainability? I do, yeah. Um, you know, I, every time I'm on a panel with Daniel, I feel like I have to defend the cruise industry. Um, but... Um, you know, it's a I, habit, Lisa. I know, I know, I know, Daniel. We'll talk later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you are in it. Um, the, you know, the. There's a lot of work going on with communities around the world relative to the topic of overtourism, and I don't want anybody to leave this room to think that the industry doesn't take this seriously. And I also want everyone in the room to know that overtourism is a problem that far transcends the cruise industry. CLIA, who's the you know organization that we all work with as an industry, is working diligently across um, the globe, primarily focusing on four different portions in Europe right now, and we have partnered, Celebrity Cruises has partnered with them to do the first positive impact tours to address some of the biggest issues that some of these places have with just the numbers of people, but not necessarily the numbers of people. It's really how they're dispersed. And I think that's the big opportunity. And make no mistakes, everyone we talk to really wants our guests to come. It's critical to their communities and to their economic um, livelihood. We just need to have more conversations. I completely agree on that point, where we have to be partners, we can't just show up and leave. We have to engage in these communities, and we are working really hard to do a much better job at that. I want to just finish with one story, and I'll make it quick, because Matthew, you talked about economic impact and how important it is. We visit a port in Alaska called Icy Strait. I was there on one of my president's cruises, and I met the CEO of the Huna Corporation, Russell. And they did this big celebration for celebrity because it just so happened on that day, it was the 1,000th call on Icy Strait, and it happened to be a celebrity ship. And the first call, I think it was back in 2004, was on the Celebrity Mercury, also a celebrity ship. And they wanted to celebrate and thank celebrity for that. But more than that, Russell was telling me the story about Icy Strait. Icy Strait was a dying community. The tribe that founded the community was becoming extinct. Young people were leaving to go to Juneau, and they weren't coming back. There was no future for them, there was no livelihood for them, and they were embarrassed by their culture. When we came in and developed that port, they all still went away to go to school in Juneau, but they started coming back. Out of 750 people that live in Icy Strait, we employ almost 300 of them. And we single-handedly brought back that community and that culture within that community from extinction. Those are the stories that make me really proud to be part of this industry and my company. No, and that is very true. I think I use uh, Daniel, Lee, any more comments on sustainability from your perspective? 
Yeah, I, I think it's a very good thing that we're talking about it. Uh, as an industry, we are dependent uh, on these areas actually being able to take us for, for another few hundred years. And me and Lisa, we disagree on a lot on the cruise industry, so, so, so thank you for coming, coming with that. Um, but, but it's going to be a topic that really, really affects uh, the client's decision to make purchases. What I really hope uh, for the entire industry is that we're going to be able to uh, see through greenwashing attempts. Because it's going to be a lot of greenwashing, as, as it now is a, is a topic on everyone's minds and lips. And I mean, Lee, to credit you guys, you were, you were carbon neutral in 2007, 8, 9? Yep. Yeah. So good. Now everyone is talking about it. So I think one of our most important aspects now is to see through all the greenwashing that's going to happen around, because it's suddenly cool to start talking about it. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and that's going to be tough. I don't know how we can solve that. Uh, I, hope, I hope the guests will see through it. Uh, and um, sometimes I'm asked uh, by journalists and say, what do you do uh, to be a, live a sustainable life? And I say, you know, I drive an electric car, I recycle, uh, and then I think, my, my buzzing around, what do I do? Well, I travel with the subway, I take the bus. Um, but the most important thing the consumer out there can do to live a good life and not pollute is taking conscious decisions when they choose um, what uh, or who they're going to buy their products from, whether that being retail or travel uh, or airlines. Uh, make conscious decision. That's by far the most valuable contribution for a single person to make this this world a better place. So it comes down to individuals. Uh, Lee, you have a comment? Yeah, I'll be I'll give two points and uh, we can move on to another topic. But uh, again, it's so cool to even have this conversation and everyone discussing their points. There's two really last things I'd like to leave everyone with. Purpose and profit, they both work. Yep, you can make a great product that's great for the planet, great for your customer, and makes it better. It does not make it worse or limits the quality of that product that makes it better. Since we've been on this journey, the last three to four years of our company, we've had record growth, record profit. They do not sacrifice each other. They help each other, they go hand in hand, and they make a better product, and they make a better planet. The second is and that I'd recommend anyone here that is looking to, to go beyond greenwashing and understand how you can get some sort of framework or some sort of badge is to look at becoming a B Corp. Uh, we became a B Corp about two years ago now, so companies that you may know quite well like Patagonia, Ben and & Jerry's, and it's a stamp that says your business is being a force for good for the world. And it ensures that you're looking after your workers, it ensures you interact with the community in the right way, you're transparent in your governance. Um, and it's a really clear way for you to be a better organisation, to understand around how you can improve your impact. And it's also a clear signal to customers if they're looking for a way to navigate, which can be a pretty confusing uh, marketplace from a greenwashing point of view.